Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with tutorials on quantum statistics. This is video number 34, and before I talk about it, just to, to point out, I have a, a website now, universityphysicstutorials.com. So up until now, I've been talking about quantum statistics from the occupancy function, or the multiplicity, excuse me, from the multiplicity rather than the occupancy. But I said that there's, all, there's a better way of doing it, or a slicker way of doing it via thermodynamics, so that's why at the start of my tutorial series I did a few videos on the Boltzmann factor and the partition function. And also actually these videos that I'm doing right now lead directly on from my tutorial series on thermodynamics. So what I'm going to do is show you how to calculate the average energy of a system using the partition function. And this is very important as I'll be using this formula the whole time. And once, you, once this formula is proven or accepted then we can get to all of the occupancy functions in a very, a very few steps which is great. Previous videos to this, I derived the Boltzmann factor and I also derived the partition function. So let's just um, let's just do a small bit of recap. So the Boltzmann factor is e to the minus e sub s over kt. So it's the energy of your state in state s divided by kt. Well, the exp the negative exponential of that, and the partition function. The partition function is the sum, uh, and we give the placeholder z for the partition function. z is the sum over s of the Boltzmann factors. Just to remind us, okay? So it's essentially this normalization constant, okay? Um, yeah, it's this normalization constant. So, yeah, you can look at my video on the partition function if you like. So in general, what we say is the probability of an event of an event occurring is given as follows. It's given by one over z e to the minus e of s over k t, or it's given as e to the minus e of s over k t divided by the sum over s of e to the minus e of s over k t, where this is just the energy level of a particular level that you're looking to find the probability of, whereas this is the sum of all. The, the, the corresponding Boltzmann factors. Now let's look a small bit on, on average. It's something you probably you you know it, it should be it might be obvious, but you might have never looked at it this way. If you think about averaging averaging something, I'm going to give the the, the bar the, this bar notation being the average. So let's think about the average of something. Let's say you wanted to find the average of your money. Let's give it m bar, and you have lots of different coins. So you might have let's say four coins. Uh, which are, let's say, um, one dollar. And you might have three coins which are, uh, let's say, um, five dollars, or whatever. Okay, plus ten coins, or ten notes, which are a hundred dollars. Okay, and you want to find the average. What's the average value of your, your money? Well, then, of course, you're going to divide it by, you're going to get the money multiplied by how many you have, and divided by four plus three plus ten, which is 17. Okay, but another way of looking at this is as follows. You could instead say it's the, your average money is your money, we'll say, multiplied by the probability of having that money. Plus five dollars uh, multiplied by three over 17. Plus a uh, hundred dollars multiplied by 10 over 17. You could look at that way. Okay? Or you could say that your your average money is your, we'll say, small money multiplied by the prob probability of your small money. Okay? But you're going to sum over them like that. You could look at it that way if you like. Whereas 4 over 17 is, of course, the probability of getting $1. 3 over 17 is the probability of getting $5. 10 over 17 is the probability of getting $100. So, now that hopefully you've accepted that, let's look at the following. Let's generalize this to energy. So the average energy is going to be the sum over S of the energy of your state multiplied by the amount of particles in that state divided by the total number of particles. I'm sure you can see what's coming next. That's going to be the sum over S of the energy of a particular state multiplied by n of s over n, but that can be rewritten in terms of probabilities because it's the sum over s, the energy of that state, and we also have the probability of that state occurring. Okay, now, 
we're talking about energy, so probabilities we just wrote a moment ago. That means the average energy is the sum over s of e, the energy of that state, multiplied by 1 over z, e to the minus, um, we'll say, beta epsilon, beta e of s, like that. You can write it that way, beta is equal to 1 over kt. We call that the thermodynamic beta. Now, 1 over z, if you want, can be moved out here, because although it depends on all your your different uh, energy levels, it's a constant for a particular system. Okay? <coughs> so we said that this is the average energy of our system. Now, what I'm going to show you is that we can calculate this from the, the partition function. So let's say 1 over z is equal to e to the, is the sum over s, e to the minus e of s over kt. And I'm going to show you that you can get the average energy by looking at this particular formula here. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, let's get del z del beta, where beta is equal to 1 over kt. Well, that's going to be del del beta of the sum over s of e to the minus beta epsilon. I'm going to get rid of the subscript. Um, I'm going to get rid of or beta, beta e, we'll say. I'm going to get rid of the, um, the s part. Okay? Well, that's a pretty straightforward derivative. You can bring the derivative inside del del beta e to the minus beta e. Okay, and that's of course going to be the sum over s of minus e times e to the minus beta e. Like that. Now, so we're just going to do a small bit of trickery here. I'm going to multiply by 1, pre-multiply by 1 over z. So we have minus 1 over z del beta del z. What's that going to be equal to? Well, that's going to be minus 1 over z times the sum over s, the sum over s of minus e e to the minus beta e. OK? So clearly, the negative signs here are going to cancel out. And what we're going to be left with is the sum over s the energy, we'll say I'm going to put in the placeholder this time, we're going to have e to the minus beta e of s divided by z. And look what we have here. It's pretty much the same thing. It is in fact the same thing. So I'm just going to rewrite it. That minus 1 over z del beta del z is equal to 1 over z, sum over s, e of s, e to the minus beta e of s. Okay, so we see that this is the same as up here. Okay, so the conclusion we can say is to get the average energy of a system is equal to minus 1 over the partition function del beta del z. Who cares? Hmm? You might ask yourself, who cares? What's the difference? What's the big deal? The big deal here is that the partition function is usually easy to count it to easy to approximate at the least. I know it's an it's an infinite series, but we can approximate it. It's easy to approximate it. So once you have that, you can get the average energy in a couple of steps. Average energy of a couple of steps is great. It's so quick at calculating the occupancy functions because you can get the average energy and you can get specific heat capacity and all that sort of thing. All right, so that's all I've got to say about that. This is a very important formula, and I'll be using it a lot. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also click on universityphysicstutorial.com. Thank you.